thanks to my patrons for sponsoring this video. Join us at patreon.com slash Elvan. Yay! Yes, amazing. Okay, so this should work. Um, nice to talk to you for the first time. <laughs> and um, yes, welcome. Yes. And uh, yeah, let's just start with, uh, would you like to kind of introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about your projects and everything? Yes. Yes. So, hi everyone. My name is Diana van Giersberg. You may know me from symphonic metal band Xandria, with which I toured the world and was a member of for four years. And now I have gone solo. Yes, solo in Amazing. symphonic metal. I've just un um, unleashed, yes, I've just unleashed my second single, which is titled Unleash the Siren. And um, yeah, I'm here today to talk to you because I thought you're, uh, how, do you, how, do you, how are these little things called? You a mean judgment the video, but. Reactions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> reactions. <laughs> videos. <laughs> Love that. Judge. Yeah. Yeah. So that your reaction to judge, video, you know. <laughs> really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yay or nay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. No, it was really good, and you really got into the, um, uh, the vocal technique, which I loved. Uh, so, um, and you made a, a shout out to me in the video, like if you're watching Diane, and I was. So yeah. here I am talking to you today. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you. And um, I'd love to like have a bit of like take a bit of time to like talk about some of those things that I'm I'm very curious about. But like, um, yes, please. Yeah. But first of all, um, I'd like to sort of like start a little bit more in the beginning. And I, I'd love to know what got you interested specifically in metal and the kind of classical singing yeah. slash singing in general, you know? Well, it's, it's a very interesting story, actually, because I'm a perfect mix of the musical preference of my father, who mm. loves like the more classical uh, progressive rock bands, uh, Deep Purple, for example. And then my mother, on the other hand, who is a huge fan of classical music, uh, at Peer Gint, uh, from Edvard Grieg, I know this by heart. I can all, almost sing it backwards. Um, she listened to that so much. But um, also many other composers. So I had like my mom lis listening to classical music and my, uh, my father then to the progressive rock bands. And um, voila, there, <laughs> there I was <laughs> so... stuck in the middle. <laughs> and I still am, but uh, it's a good place to be stuck in. I shouldn't call it stuck. It's a, uh, yeah, I feel quite at home in this crossover. But like, with that said, actually, I'm kind of interested in, because you stay stuck in the middle, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'd, I'd really love to know, like, have you had specific challenges in your, like, journey, maybe, like, whether it's technical, like, vocal technique versus just, you um, know? Yeah, um... The challenge was and still is how can you make a balanced enough mix on your ears that you have enough room to hear yourself, which is, um, yeah, it's hard to say much more important when you are a classically trained singer than, uh, for example, a pop singer, because it's important, it's not the right word, but if you are classically trained, you're used to working with a room. You know, your voice bounces off different like walls, ceiling, and every fabric is different. So wood is different, resonates different to carpet, to a wall, which is more like ironish, soundish. And you're, if you're a classically trained singer, you work with everything that just bounces off and then comes back to you. And that's how you make your sound. If you're used to singing with a microphone, the, it's a very direct signal. It's just bam, and then someone at the mixing desk or at the monitoring de desk makes the, the sound of your vocal, so uh, mid, high, low, and, and how much reverb or yeah. echo, delay you want, whatever that mix. Um, so as a classically trained singer, stepping into the world where you have to work with a microphone, I find it very hard to be able to reconstruct that room. And I now have found a way, I always push my highs and I give it uh, a reverb that is, it's not the bathroom reverb and it's definitely not the 
the the church reverb because then it would distort everything else that comes in and of course the mic catches a lot of the band during singing yeah um, but there is a little bit of that in there so I have the I can fool my brain into thinking look I am in a, in a room and I'm working with the room mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. with the voice you're actually not but it's it's kind of this balance like how can I pretend to be there so I can sing classically um not just make the sound but really work yeah I hope <laughs> no I, I still I, following me yeah absolutely no no I get what you mean and that leads me into asking you another question actually which is do you find or is there like are there a lot of differences for you in how you work um, in terms of like when you're singing live versus when you're recording? Because those are two completely mm-hmm. different environments. So is there like something that you're taking into account in those two cases that is different? Yeah, uh, when I am recording, I am all only using like one. Uh... Oh. Wait, I can show you. Yeah, yeah. So for the... Live, I'm using these. Yes. And these are like molds uh, that fit perfectly in my in my ear. And there are four drivers in there. Never yeah. go for the cheap option because if you have the chance to to create a proper in ear and have them like fit exactly to your ears, and and if you're me, have a little diamond in there as well. Nice, <laughs> nice. Love that. Yeah, then, then that's the best thing that you can give yourself, a proper in-ear sound. And never take one of those off because the sound uh, on, on the outside is completely distorted <laughs> and, and different from what you would like to hear. So that's how I do a live sound. And then in the studio, there is this. Mm-hmm. But I, I never sing like this. I always sing like this. Oh, uh, yeah. Because okay. one ear needs to work with the room, which is horrible. Horrible because it's such a dry room that you're yeah. not able to sing. Yeah. Um, but still, I need to hear my voice in a direct sound. Yeah. And then this one hears the arrangement bands, blah, blah, blah. Bands, yeah. multiple, no, yeah. band, one band. Because you need to hear the music on the other side yeah. as well. Yeah. Although yeah. I am with <laughs> every producer I work with, they always find me a bit strange because I always say, yeah, please. Please turn the band down. I need to hear myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then they're like, but yeah, it's so low. Can you still like hear the band? And at certain points, I'm like, I really don't care. I want to hear my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes so sense. I have the band really low. I have to click a little bit above. And if they have separate tracks, I have the arrangements because that's how I love to sing uh, on top of that. And then my voice. Yeah, 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 okay. And also for a live sound, I have the arrangements way, way louder than the band. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Like your uh, your harmonies basically are like way louder. Yeah, that's where yes. I get the harmony and, and also the flow a little bit. Um, of course, uh, because the, the mic also catches the live, uh, yeah. the, the, the mix and, and the drums behind you, there's no reason for me at least to push the drums because the mic catches that. Yeah. So it's not that I don't hear the voice. It's just that I hear them vaguely. I know they're there. They gave me a little bit of oomph. But I'm not the rock singer that really needs to, you know, to feel all the the low end to perform. No, I I want tranquility. I want actually what everyone does not want for a live setting. You know, the audience. They mm-hmm. they want to be taken away and they want to feel the bass right here. Everything that I do not want. Yeah. <laughs> I, as if there's tumbleweeds in my ears that's for me that would be the dream <laughs> yeah I, I get it though because I actually I always ask the drummer to like to have less drums in my in ears too <laughs> like yeah. can you actually just like cut it off like I don't need it <laughs> yeah hey can you just sit there and smile please yeah. <laughs> no I know it's horrible because yeah. it's almost like you're saying like I, I don't like what you're doing so just <laughs> Stop it, like in general, like uh, just, just be a pretty boy and sit there. <laughs> no, this is this is really horrible. And we're making this joke because you you absolutely know what I'm what I'm talking about here. Um, but it's it's a struggle, but always, especially on smaller stages. If you're right in front of the drum kit, it's 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 a constant clash. 
yeah. between drums and and singers like how loud can you go and then what is what is still okay for you to play with and uh what is still okay for the drummer to play with because if i keep shushing him there will be no like good notes left so that's also hard to work with yeah, yeah. And the higher the drums are the louder you're like pushed to sing which is not necessarily something no, that you I have to that. do yeah exactly you don't no. want to just sing loud because you're trying to hear yourself you know you should so, never do that yeah no yeah. no 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 yeah no yeah. It, you should never strain in order to be able to hear yourself become because then something else is going wrong mm -hmm. in a uh a plugged session you should never never give more like 70 than 80 percent never Never yeah. go to to a hundred because if you don't hear the difference, the audience will not hear the difference. Yeah, that's yeah, I see what you mean. It's like I'm wondering. Yeah, because that that you know that little top, the eighty to hundred, it's only meant for when you're already on a on a high or on a loud note to give that little extra, uh, you know, glow on the note or that little extra uh, euphoric touch. That's what that that top uh, dynamic is for. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You want to have something left to to give a bit more on those moments of the yeah, song but, that but it's, require it's it. articulation. It's not at all the to get the nowhere to really know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, like one of the things that is on the back of my mind is uh, when you're like in studio and you're recording back vocals or harmonies. Because yeah. I think there's like this challenge that I've run into, especially with, uh, you know, uh, operatic vocals. And yeah. I'm interested in how you're solving that problem or if that's even something that's like that you have in mind when you're recording. And it is um, because when you're singing with a lot of vibrato, doing yeah. harmonies <laughs> becomes a lot more difficult. And that is true. Yeah. yeah. How do you approach that? Do you have something in mind? Um, well... Uh, the first thing to know is that a harmony vocal is never a lead vocal. Mm -hmm. So a harmony vocal should not sound like a lead, whereas a lead is very full and you want to pronounce everything and all the little articulation things, style things should be notable with backing vocals, not at all. Because a backing vocal, you will always, or at least I'm used to that, always record it three times, the same line. And then they'll put it on, uh, they'll mix that and put it on one track. And then you record like the second layer, which is, of course, a different harmony. Again, that will be three times. So it's yeah. while a lead is only once. So it's, it's, it's a much plainer way of singing. You don't have to uh, push that hard. You don't have to make it that noticeable because it's a, uh, it's a it's a backing vocal, so it will be only be heard in the back. Um, it's there to give it a different color. It's not there to catch the attention. Then you're doing it wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that being said, I always try to match my vibrato, um, and if that doesn't work, I can also do a smaller vibrato or take the vibrato off. But that will, I don't know. I always have the idea of using a non-vibrato harmony, a build-up harmony. Marcella Bovio, a good friend of mine, calls them vocal cakes, which I think is a perfect word. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's so good, because it really is a vocal cake. But yeah. what I wanted to say, if you build that without using a, uh, a vibrato, it will sound like a car horn. Mm. If you hear those tracks separately, it will be like, eh, eh. Yeah. It's really strange, yeah. Yeah. They, they they can be very different basically from yeah. the like yeah. main yeah like absolutely yeah that like I'm I'm interested to know like what's your um, when you do vocal arrangements and you decide on where to put uh, harmonies or like you know those yeah. uh, extra lines uh, what's yeah. like your your kind of process when it comes to that vocal arrangement process well they have to have a function. Mm -hmm. um, if you do a verse and you have like a double verse, then of course the second verse will have those um, uh, those harmonies because your ears already know the melody. So you have to somehow spice it up, make it more interesting, and that's where you can do that. Or uh, have uh, in the orchestration have uh, little touches in the arrangement so that you're uh, 
And you might not be aware of that, but your mind still goes like, oh, okay, wait, I want to continue listening because I'm hearing new things here. So let me just not shut up and, and want to do something else. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things. Uh, I also like that you can give it a color. So you, with backing vocals, you can make things more more warm and bright and push someone into the lyrical direction, like like the poetic sense of where you want, want to go with this song. Um, yeah, you can make it more bright, you can make it more more sad or even more dark, especially if you're you're panning. So you're yeah. making use of left, right, left, right, left, right. If you do like, bah, 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 that's very disturbing and it can really announce that, okay, now we're going into a happy part and uh, be scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like playing with these, um, the, the, the spectrum of left and right, basically. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and like creating a buildup is... Is the... Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of tricks that you can do, and it's it's great fun. Yeah, yeah. Because that you know, a song really grows from that. Um, when I'm uh, so, I, I, first there's songwriting, and then there's demoing, uh, pre-production. So you demo everything, and you have an idea of what it sounds like, and then you can really study to, you know, get everything on a certain level. But in the demoing phase, I sometimes I do backing vocals. Quite often, they're not the the definite ones. Um, but I love that during the recording when the leads are done and then you start to focus on the backing vocals, that can really make a song come to life. Yeah. That's, it's, ah, oh, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. It is very fun. Yeah, um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a question and it kind of escaped my mind. Oh no. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I just wanted to uh, to uh, uh, point out for those that, that follow me on my on my socials, uh, I've been telling everyone that for Unleash the Sirens, we did not only do the uh, the backing vocals, we also built the and and with we I'm uh, uh, talking about myself and producer Joost van der Broek, we built the the whole choir uh, by ourselves. So he's in there in the in, because he has a beautiful bass voice. So he added a little bit of the of bass, he sang it by himself. And then there, there is me like going from like, not all, even alto, like contra alto, and then like up to, uh, if, I, if I was like this high colatura soprano, I'm not, <laughs> but I can do it for a backing vocals and I have to, I have to repeat yeah. that live. So I did, of course I can do the extreme high notes, but live, no way. Um, <laughs> so we built a, the whole choir and we have more than 100 vocal tracks. And imagine that, that every track is at least sang three times. I think we even did them six times for the choir to have it sound yeah. that massive. Yeah. To, and that's, uh, yeah. yeah. To create this this depth and this kind of wall of sound. That, yes, that, yeah, yeah. That I can hear in the, the, the chorus of your, uh, like I think you yeah, did that for the choruses for your two uh, singles. For the chorus, yeah. and then there's this this Latin uh, bit in the, in the beginning and in the end, and it's there as well. Oh, and yeah. of course we have the, um, uh, the vocal bridge, which is mm -hmm. just uh, before the final half chorus, before it mod modulates, and then there's the, the end chorus. Yeah. But the vocal bridge, that's, oh man, I, I, I love that part. Yeah. And so, oh, oh I love that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I remembered what was my my question earlier, and it's in the same vein, um, because um, it's it's about like the arrangements, or it's less a question and it's more a comment on on the music right. because um, ah, so we are I've, doing the judgment thing here. <laughs> uh, it's not. <laughs> no, no, it's, no, it's just I'm an just observation. <laughs> <laughs> like I've just observed something super interesting actually and it is that uh, in those two songs you're going because there's like this formula when like writing music that is like a common formula you know that you you go and yeah. like the the typical verse is a little bit lower and it's like a bit more choppy in terms of the rhythms and then the chorus is like higher yeah. and longer yeah. notes and everything and it feels to me like you kind of swap them a little bit like the the verses are like I, higher yeah. and the choruses are a little bit kind of lower and they they grow they start a little bit lower yeah, yeah. it starts yeah. uh yeah. and are like yeah, more it's rhythmic because then i can make a, a yeah i can i can make a build up and in this uh in the symphonic metal genre people just they love a staccato chorus so um yes 
I, I, listen, I'm not going to do this every time, but you know, the, if you uh, would ask people to name three of their favorite songs from the symphonic metal genre, I can, I, I, I really want to bet that two out of three, if or not all three, will have a staccato chorus. So, yeah, it was very clear that I love them too. That that was what we should do. And we, it's like half done for after the storm, and then with the sing pause. You know, that's absolutely uh, telling me to the people, okay, sing along. This is you. Yeah. Come on, it's staccato. You can do this. Because, well, imagine me standing in front of a crowd and doing this beautiful legato line, and then, then like, come on, will you sing with me? No one's gonna do that. That is and every so true. everyone can do like sing. Oh, that is so, so it's, true. It's also, yeah. So it's it's two things. It's it's like this is what people love. I know that I love it too. So why not use it? And the other one is I want to engage people to sing along. And I'm when I'm writing, I'm already thinking about how is this going to work live. So yeah, that's the that's answer. Plain logic for me to write it like this. Yeah. That makes so. I like. On, I have never thought about it that way. But you are so like on point with that. It oh, is thanks. so true. <laughs> like I, I just so like now I'm like just okay. What are the songs that are like very like known songs in the genre that. You know, uh, and you're you're a hundred percent correct. I somehow never like put the like links together. That's that's awesome. And the fact is because it's it's in our nature. It, yeah. It, 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 well, for example, take an army that's marching. Uh, only one of them has to like start chanting a voice or a sentence, and everyone will join in if it's to the beat of the march, mm -hmm. because it's it's in our nature. The first thing we um, not we hear, but we, uh, how do you say this? You know, the first thing we hear is our heartbeat. So we have gung, 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 gung. And the first thing we pick up on are rhythms, much more than melodies. And doing a staccato chorus is, is that. So I'm giving you a rhythm. And the important thing when writing a staccato chorus is that you repeat the same rhythm every time. Yeah. So I did sing, fourth, Da, da, di, da, da. If I would have changed that for the second line, for the third line, then everything would have gotten lost. Yeah. So it's very important to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, because then you're, you're telling the audience, this is what we're doing. Here's chorus one, listen. Second chorus, join in. Third chorus, damn, sing along. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, I know, well, it's, <laughs> like, I, it's, like, I don't know if it's brilliant. It's just the way, it, that's the way it works. It's, it's human nature to recognize uh, a rhythm and when it repeats to want to join in. Yeah, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. I love that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. I'm, I'm also interested in talking a little bit about, um, like, we can keep it, you know, uh, surface in terms of like, we want people to be able to follow with our, our conversation, but... I'm very interested yeah. in what it means for you to be a spinto soprano. Ah, yeah. Well, I love. I, I there were two things that you said in your judgment video. I so uh, why can't I remember what these things are called? A reaction. Tell, tell yeah. me again. Yeah. Reaction, reaction video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were two things that stood out for me. Um, one of them is that, especially on the top notes, the voice has a lot of iron in it. There's this metallic sound that can really cut through, um, well, everything that's around it. And that's very true, especially if you're standing in an opera hall and you go up to the high E. And then, you know, if, you're, if you already know there's a high B flat or B coming, oh, I just love these moments because I'm like, I gotcha. Here's it coming. And then, and then you know, <laughs> then the knife comes out and it's like everyone in the back row is still like, yeah, huh? what's that? Well, that's very typical of a spinto soprano. And then the other thing that you said was, um, so this is a voice type uh, for which is very hard, very hard to sing soft notes because indeed the voice just wants to do, bam, there yeah. I am. And that's so true. Um, loud. Oh, 
easy. Like you can wake me up at night and say, sing a, a high, loud note, and uh, there it is. And okay, I'll go back to sleep. But <laughs> soft. Yeah, 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 but that's true. But but soft. I really like, have to warm up and warm up and warm up and warm up. And then, you know, go from the, well, not the loud note, but the mezzo for the note. And then make it more pianissimo and go softer, go softer, go softer. And then into the, the note where you're just like, like humming. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. that's it you go from from really loud to the other end which is like a hum and at some point the the voice just closes and you're you're behind the nostrils um but that getting there is like a daily process and then studying that uh, getting in it at all is like that's years and years before you can make a very soft soft sound yeah. and then still my pianissimo is nothing compared to a, a the pianissimo of a, of a very light voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will never be comparable. But then again, uh, their loudest note is nothing compared to my loudest note. I uh, to the the ones who really don't get what we're talking about here. I what I always told my students is that some instruments are like a trumpet, and I am like a trombone. So mm. what I cannot do is what a trumpet do best. It's like this this gymnastics, you know, the really fast notes and be very precise and accurate about those. I can try that. I can study like hell. And maybe I can get there. And then there's a trumpet singer who stands next to me. And it's just because it's her nature or his that it just it flows out and it sounds so organically. And that's what people will want to hear. So the, the trumpet, the uh, acrobatics, not for me. I'm very good at doing dude, and I'm very loud and very high. That's what my voice does. So I love that. I really recognized uh, that you said, okay, so this is this is something something difficult. And it's even more difficult to try to get that on a record because uh, in the studio, they will normalize everything. So soft will have the same volume as a loud note, a loud note. So you really have to find a way to um, to give it a feeling of now I'm singing soft and give it a feeling of now it's loud, mm-hmm. you know? So, because everything becomes the same. Uh, yeah, I just said it, just the same volume. So there is also this kind of theatric, um, yeah, the, the feeling, movement that you have to attach to a note to have it like, this is how I want to portray singing soft and this is how I want to portray singing loud, yeah. Yeah. Like actually, I, I want to share a, a quick story with you regarding that, yeah. and I have a question for you after that because I had a, a moment in my you know journey where um, I made a cover of Sweet Atonement just for fun. Like I just sat down ah, yeah. and I sang that song, and it just had like I just had this feeling that the way you sang it was such a great reference for like my type of voice too, and then. Mm. I was like, there's just something that that clicks for me, and then I I looked up what kind of voice you had and came up yeah. with spinto soprano, and yeah. but for me that was a, a big moment because I felt like okay I can really embrace this like quality that I didn't know was like yeah I thought I was lyrical soprano and then I was like I, I think actually not, and I'm just wondering if you had a similar a similar moment in your journey because I don't think spinto sopranos are that common and so we kind of get compared a little bit to other types of sopranos and yeah for me it was dramatic soprano yeah yeah yeah, okay which which i still still well can step into Mm -hmm. um i think i can make the high notes uh, a bit warmer if i choose to but it's not that natural to me Mm -hmm. um but uh, during my education, everyone told me, oh, you're a dramatic soprano. You're going to be a Wagner soprano. And I was already oh. like, you're the whole. <laughs> <laughs> because that, you know, and everyone saying that was like in amazement, like, oh, a Wagner soprano. Wow. And I was like, OK, so now I probably have to like Wagner then as well. And, and I do, but not the way that I like yeah. Verdi. Yeah. It's, oh, it's like mm. <laughs> very and the, the 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 bigger roles in in Puccini that's that's yeah I'm I can just eat that yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah so for you yeah. I, I don't know yeah so, like is it 
isn't it like always kind of a journey of discovery? Like no matter how long you work at it, I think there's there or maybe maybe that's not the case. I'm asking for your opinion on that, but I, I'm on the impression that like this is something that keeps evolving over time, basically. Uh, yes, yes, because with age, your muscle tissue changes. So also the way uh, your, your voice will sound changes, which is not necessarily a bad thing because I like my voice now better than, than a few years back. Um, and then I'm really saying 10 years back. Um, but what I love to say is that if you study, study, you get to a certain level and it's here. And of course, there's always steps above, but they're just tiny steps. So what I love to do is widen the spectrum. So it just, and it's a different way. So it's not only, you don't have to talk about getting better you, mm -hmm. because that's maintenance and that's then making a tiny breakthrough. And then there are different features like add-ons on your voice. But like widen the horizon and, and also dive into uh, popular techniques, for example, belting, which is what I do a lot in my progressive metal band, Ex Libris, uh, which I did not do in Xandria, I, well, with, with a few notes here and there. Um, and I won't do it uh, with my Diana music because I really want that to be a uh, crossover between the classical voice and symphonic metal music. But I love doing the belt as long as it has an emotional purpose in the lyrics. So I won't do it just for the sake of, look at me, I can do this technique, yay. No, that's, that's what I would never do. But I widen the horizon like that and then, okay, so there's that. And how now can I use it again with my classical voice? Where, what is it similar to? And funny enough, it's sometimes very similar to climbing in the upper register and then Sometimes you also have like to, with belting, it's like restraining here, you know, you get all the, the power from the, the harness, as I like to call it. And sometimes for the upper notes, you have to like lift the chest as well. Um, and, you, and you really feel the, the power there. I always feel very manly if, if, I, if I do like, I feel like I'm, you know, like puffing up my chest like, like man do. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting to, if you widen your horizon, um, you venture into different uh, vocal worlds and then you come back and you think, hey, wait, maybe I did that all along, but I just didn't know. Yeah. And actually, I I'm wondering, since uh, you're like really focusing on the opera, uh, operatic aspect of like your, um, your solo music. Um, yeah. I'm like wondering what are... I don't know how to ask that. Like, what are the, the differences in like, like, I'll say like, kind of opera like re like if you're like mm. performing an opera like an actual opera versus how you're yeah. treating the sound for like a metal band and how like you're modernizing oh, it's way different yeah it's way different if i would sing like full on with a classical voice no one would be interested because they <laughs> they one they could not understand what i would be singing and I think that uh, if you sing classically, then uh, every note you sing is born from the note you've just sang before. Uh, do you know what I, yes. what I mean? Yes. So it's extremely legato. It's, uh, I, again, what I would say in my lessons that a vocal line is like um, a, a cord where you hang your laundry on. If you have these these little wooden pinch thingies that I don't know in English what they're called. If you take them off, the cord is still there. And that's the, the um, your breath support. Yeah. It's not that if you would hang your laundry on the cord that you would cut the breath support. No, it's not like that. So that's classical singing. It's like from low to full. It's, it's everything is one line. While in, um, in if, if I sing stuff from Diana, I have to, uh, I have to more often deliver the deliver it in pieces. Otherwise, people will not understand. Yeah, I love the first way of singing, but I also know that it is very, very much appropriate when the accompaniment is also working like that. And simply said, um, if if you record with a band, it's like duck. Duck, 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 
and there's no freedom to breathe and let this this vocal line discord with the laundry just let it like if it's some kind of syrup you know that you're that you're pulling or or it's it's, it's a string that you're like banding and then it it goes back and forth and back and forth and it's oh no you can't do it in <laughs> with a band it's like tech 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 so you have to find your freedom within that and that unfortunately means dividing it into smaller bits and mm. that will make it understandable and also fit the music much better yeah actually uh, are you referring also to the um, because uh, when you're singing with an orchestra in the background they're accompanying you you are giving the yes. tempo and that's yes. wildly different to singing on a click it's extremely yeah. different yeah. yes and yeah. it's, I'm fighting with that in the studio. I'm like, okay, so can we now just follow me? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to sing and not be in the shame. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's really hard sometimes. Yeah, because <laughs> it's frustrating, you know, because then, then you hear that, oh, but if I just make a little, little bit of diminuendo here, it would be so much more musical and organic. And then, nope. Cannot do that. No. This is really an example of computer says no. Computer says no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah. Just no, no. Nope. Computer says no. <laughs> yeah, the drummer just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. Uh, or the the click actually, because then the yeah, drummer yeah. still has to follow the click. So yeah. Yeah. Just for fun, are there like a lot of uh, tempo changes, like small tempo changes, or do you usually keep it pretty straight? Like, no, the this is pretty straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, there is with with Unleash the Silence. There is this, this, you know, three over four feeling. So you have the feeling of a yaka ta 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 ta. But it's still a four. Yeah. But that yeah. said, um, that's just beginner stuff. So it's it's no it's because otherwise it would be way too complex and then if you want that you have to listen to Exlibris because that's much more complex. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's a different different audience. Yeah, it takes yeah. a different kind of listener to enjoy that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's mean. much more mathematical and it's it's fine, you know. It, it's uh, if you're like that or you like that, that's fine. But it's a different audience. Yeah, I imagine that's a little bit more of the audience of Ex Libris, basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. They they want to be like mathematically challenged, and yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> like they like we're we're shifting all of a sudden, and it's like if 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 you have this picture, and then it's like, and now they're there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a completely different universe and style, basically, in terms of the. Yeah, and we the, have a lot of yeah. hooks and tricks and. Um, yeah, things that make you go like, ah, oh, huh? yeah. and I love that. <laughs> but uh, but if you if you enjoy the you know the just just kagun, 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 the moving forward steady pace, then then Diana is much more what you should listen to. Yeah. Yeah. With that said, uh, would you like to take a second to uh, talk a little bit about your newest single? Just a bit. Yeah. Like you were inspired by. Uh, and, well, yeah. it's you know that all my singles they they linked together. It's one continuous story. So unleash the asylum picks up where after the storm left off. Um, also in the video, in the video of uh, after the storm, I run into an open field and I'm like happy, like oh yes, freedom, I've made it. Um, the the storm is in in the back and and I've made it. And then with Unleash the Siren, I'm still like happy and running. And then there's the black hand coming from the forest and trying to catch me. And um, as I'm really happy about this, as many people already understood, where after the storm is really the, the breakup from Xandria that happened. It's really like the information, like this happened. Um, this is how it makes me feel and I'm going to escape and now I'm out of the situation. Um, where uh, Unleash the Siren is much more about the mental storm that came afterwards and having to deal with everything that happened and that kept on repeating in my head. And eventually for me to find out that 
I'm the one repeating those things and I have to find a way to cope with it uh, before I can move on because otherwise it will just constantly like grab me by the throat and pull me down and I will still actually be in that very storm. Yeah. Actually, do you, um, do you, have you already kind of planned out what the songs are going to be about or a lot of yes. it is still open? Yeah. yeah, okay, 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 no, cool. No, uh, for all 10, I have a, a script. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah. now the, the ending of, of, of uh, uh, Unleash the Siren, especially the video, is already a hint towards the next song. Yeah, okay. Can you tell us yeah. about, like anything about the next one? Nope. Nope. Secret. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I won't be sharing that. Nope. Good. Nope. We're, we're, we're going <laughs> to no. have the surprise when, when it yeah. comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, like, thank you so much for, for coming with me today and having yeah, a conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. That was that was really great. Uh, I enjoyed. Yeah, this a lot. you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, I love talking about vocals. Finally, yeah. <laughs> I get to talk about vocals, and then no one's gonna stop me here. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I do hope everyone that started watching is still watching and didn't like go like, okay, this is this is way too difficult for me. Bye. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that people. Uh, but hooked, I think we're I think we're hooked. I think I have an audience of people who are interested in kind of dissecting those details of like what's behind the scenes and in a bit like more technical. Yeah, the, well, way, must so. be. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. And otherwise, keep on watching because you will learn something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any uh, like anything you'd like to shout out? Maybe where people can find you and uh, where they oh, can yeah, find your music? Oh, yeah, of course. You can find my music of course on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, uh, oh my God, I'm on so many streaming platforms, I'm on Bandcamp, YouTube, um, you can find everything on my website, that's maybe easier, it's www. point, <laughs> point, <laughs> dot, dianevangiersbergen.com, um, I'm sure that you will find it in the description as well, uh, there's yeah. also a a shop on my page where you can now pre-order my t-shirt you can also find the music there in digital form now because i will only start doing physical when the album is finished um i will release the album in five years and i will work up towards that with releasing two singles each year why read that on my website yeah <laughs> so go there you can find my socials there there's also a link to youtube where you can watch my videos they're beautiful cinematic videos by my dear friends from black Briar. so be sure to uh to watch those maybe you can find a link in this description as well yeah i'll put all of the links there in the description i'll try to put some on the screen also so people can find it more easy yeah. And, ah, um, yes, that's, that's brilliant. Yes, 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 yes. You also have a jewelry store with the beautiful earrings that you have so um, yeah. that are made of uh, musical <laughs> instrument parts. So I leave that there yeah, too. So this, yeah. this is actually made from, wait, let me grab one. Nice. Yeah. So I make, yeah, I'm still here. I make jewelry from guitar strings, bass guitar strings and cymbals. So this one is cut out of a cymbal like this. So I hand cut them and I design everything myself and I model them myself and I've named my brand Precious Metal Jewelry. And um, that's also the name of my website, preciousmetaljewelry.com. Yeah. yeah. I'll leave that there too. And did you ever yes, do please. one with harp, harp strings? No. no. <laughs> so if you restring, I would love to have them. I do have a couple of strings, so we can we can stay in touch with that, uh, that because they're, yes, so, they're so cool. I thought of making jewelry, but I have none of the equipment for that. But they're really beautiful, like colored gut strings. So they're, oh, they're, oh, they're really like gut. Yeah, yeah, they're gut strings, uh, and some of oh. them. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but some of them are like uh, there's mo there's three different types of strings actually there's the nylon one there's those ones and there's uh, a steel ones so I think I might yeah. have like all some of them all I'll see maybe I can send Great. you uh, some yes, stuff yes please send yeah, them to me and fun. I'll get creative with them <laughs> yeah, yeah I would love that all right 
Well, thank you so Great. much and um, have a wonderful day and um, good luck with the new um, cycle of music production for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give myself like two or three weeks still, and then then I will start the new cycle. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. if someone would like to follow that, that I will share that on my Patreon. So with my Patreon, you'll support me, my journey, and you'll get to know all the inside information. Yeah. Awesome! Thank you so much. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Okay. But thanks for having me, and uh, maybe we can catch up again um, the, for the next one, or the, even the, the one after that. Who knows? I love that. I'd love that. It was very, hey. very <laughs> cool discussion. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. I'll stop there. But then to everyone listening, bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>